Okay, this is a, an experimental video. Midnight in the coffee shop. I've taken the the writings that I do. I've taken the the writings that I do when I go to a coffee shop and I sit there and they're on Twitter. The uh, the idea came from that. So instead of sitting there writing it, I decided, well, I'll just do a regular coffee shop type of thing once a week, covering a variety of different topics that interest me. Uh, it has nothing to do with popularity of topics. Um, I will give you a click on so that when you see this video, this particular video fade away, just click on the the little box that says click on I'll fade out in the background but there will be a box in front that says click on this will give you the variety of different videos or websites that you can go to to get the information of the topics that I'm discussing uh, it will appear as a different page on your web browser you may have to click on it to actually see that I will go into a pause mode on this YouTube channel and then uh, when you're done watching the video, you just hit the X, click off it, go back to this one, take the pause off, and the show starts up again. And that's how it works. So I like to begin uh, Midnight in the Coffee Shop with uh, a mood, kind of a mood video to how I feel tonight. And so I'm about to fade out, and this is the fade scene. Okay, as you recently, as what happened last week, there was a Canadian election, or was it two weeks ago? Possible, possibly, this is live by the way, possibly, we are live when I'm filming. <laughs> possibly five weeks ago, there was a Canadian. Possibly a couple of weeks ago, or a week ago, there was a Canadian election for the Prime Minister of Canada. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Prime Minister is not the leader of Canada. He's the leader of the party that wins the election. You cannot vote in Canada for a Prime Minister. The head of Canada is the Queen. It's a like a parliamentary mon you know, like a parliamentary monarch monarchy type of thing. And I'm very much for the royals, and that's got a lot to do with my family heritage. So I'm very supportive of the Royals and, uh, I don't know, my favorite I guess is, it would have to be Prince Harry because he's a, you know, he's a man of men, if you know the guy, he doesn't take shit off anybody because he just does not give a shit about a lot of things. And he'd be the first to put you in your place if you stuck your nose in his business. And he's got the loyalty and the backing of all the men who served under him and with him. Because uh, he was there in combat fighting against terrorism in Afghanistan, putting down the enemy. And uh, just because he was a royal didn't stop him from doing his duty for his country and his people, for queen and country. And he's a hell of a great guy. He very much supported the uh, causes for um, a troop who's, troops who have been injured in battle, either mentally or physically. He's very big into helping his fellow fellow military personnel recover from what is you know, the horrors that they went through in war and battle. He, and he does that not from a perspective of sympathy, but he does that from perspective because he was there. He's seen it all. Now, in this Canadian election, the li Liberal government under uh, Pierre Trudeau's son, Justin, won the election. Now, what that means that if, for those of you who like to use drugs like uh, marijuana, you can probably within, sometime within a year, you're going to be able to go to Canada and you can walk down the street smoking a joint. Nobody's going to give a flying shit about other than uh, the fact that cigarette 
smoking one marijuana cigarette is like smoking 20 regular cigarettes at the same time. And your cancer rates, I mean, the cancer rates are going to go through the roof. I mean, oh my God. They're bad now, but you start smoking marijuana and, and doing that on a daily basis, I mean, you're looking at brain tumors, you're looking at lung cancer, throat cancer, tongue cancer, uh, breast cancer, testocular cancer. I mean, all these are related to smoking cigarettes. So when you're smoking marijuana, it's like 20 cigarettes. I mean, that's a that's a real powerful carcinogenic drug. But um, it's going to be treated like cigarettes in Canada, probably within about a year. So you could, you know, load your car up with marijuana cigarettes and drive right past the police barricade. There's nothing anybody's going to do to stop you because all across the country, marijuana will become legalized and uh, it won't. Nobody will give a flying shit that you're smoking a joint out in the sidewalk waiting for the bus. Nobody's going to stop you. Nobody's going to arrest you. It's not going to be a crime. Now, the good point is that if you're a criminal and it's legalized, you're not going to make a penny unless you become legit. You can, if you're growing, if you have to grow up somewhere, you can become a legitimate farmer of marijuana in Canada. And as long as it's your land, you're willing to pay the taxes on it. You can grow as much marijuana as you like. There's no overhead flying helicopters, nobody coming in to poison it. But you're going to take a hell of a pay cut, I'm telling you, because there's going to be a lot of growers in this country. And it will be taxed, and you will be watched for the taxes. That's the big crime there. If you're not willing to pay your taxes, you'll be arrested for that. Not growing it, that that's, won't mean anything in about a year. But uh, that's the new change in the country. If um, you're a frequent marijuana user, then this is the place you want to live. If you want to grow it as a as a hobby or as a business, then this is the place you want to live. You can grow it here in about a year's time and have your own marijuana farm. You're going to see one farm after another come up. Now, as for organized crime, they're going to lose billions and billions of dollars because it's just not going to be there anymore. I mean, why would you go to organized crime to buy your marijuana when you can go to the local smoke shop and buy it in a container? A little package. Of course, they're going to have the pictures on it. It's law in Canada. You have to have pictures of cancerous teeth, cancerous faces, parts removed from the body, cancerous throat. It has to be put on the cigarettes. It's going to be put on the marijuana as well. But that's what's news in Canada with regards to the politician. Other than that, I like the fact that Justin Trudeau is making a major effort to save people in in Syria. You know, they're just drowning in boats, and it's just a horrible mess going on there. But that's war, right? You got a million people trying to leave the country, and that's including Iraq. And that's. No, that doesn't include Iraq. You got about a million people leaving Syria, heading north. You got people living, uh, li leaving Africa, heading north. You got people leaving Iraq and heading north. Everybody wants to live in Europe. Getting across the ocean to Canada and the United States is kind of like a pipe dream. But uh, it's a major catastrophe, and I mean. You could blame it on the Muslim religion if you wanted to, but the fact is that if there was no Islamic religion, if it didn't exist, it would be over politics. And for those of you who understand the Bible and read the scriptures, this is why. When he talked about the future of the Arab people, at the beginning of the origins of the first Arab, he said that they would kill each other and fight each other on a constant basis throughout the centuries. And that's exactly what's been going on and happening. That's proof that the Bible prophecy is right dead on. Uh, changing topics. Let's see, what else do we got? Let me, leave. Let me read my list.
Oh yeah, last last um last weekend was Halloween and we almost got clocked again by another um major asteroid. This was a big bastard. If it had to hit North America it would have wiped out the entire continent. It was oh my god. But it's not it's not really the size of them that counts, it's the speed. It's all that energy. Because when you got an iron, iron rock hitting a solid body, it's going to be a hell of a lot of shaking going on. And you got to remember at speeds at what? 29 times the speed of a bullet? And that's slamming into the atmosphere? That thing is going to heat up like you wouldn't believe. And even if it doesn't hit the ground, it explodes in the atmosphere. That's going to be like multiple atomic bombs going off and burning and incinerating every, absolutely everything below it. So this was another near miss that almost hit us. But the interesting point was this particular rock, this near miss, occurred on Halloween day, I think. Or was it Halloween night? But it also looked like a skeleton, like a human skull. And that shocked everybody. It's a, it's really uh, cool the way some objects in space, the way they look. If you look at uh, Venus, not Venus, if you look at Pluto as the, as the, um, as the satellite that Earth launched towards Pluto, reached Pluto, it, you could see a heart shape on this uh, planet. I think they call it a planet now. As it got closer and closer, the, and the, not only was it a heart shape, it was actually red too. And it's like uh, when George Lucas came out with the Death Star on uh, for um, what was it the second Star Wars movie? They had the Death Star. No, it was the first, wasn't it? Anyway, you remember the Death Star being constructed in the second Star Wars movie. There was the first one that got blown up, but then there was the second. Uh, shortly after that film came out, uh, another satellite or research vessel that was sent out by Earth, NASA, had reached one of the moons of Jupiter. I can't remember the name of it. I uh, just can't remember the name, but I will print it right here. Um, as this Earth spaceship came up on this this moon it, and they were slowly getting an image. Now you gotta remember these images come line by line by line by line going down the screen. And as they were watching this moon, the first images of this moon appear line by line by line by line. It started to resemble the Death Star because there was a giant crater dead center in this picture. And this is what they saw which is really cool. So there's some really unusual looking objects out in space. It's like the face on Mars. It's just a group of hills and mountains, but but if you were to look at it, there's a human face on Mars. It looks like it's wearing a helmet. I think there's two of them. Let's see what other topics are. So I guess I'll wrap up uh, Midnight in the Coffee Shop with that. Um, I've been debating, yeah, I had a lot of problems trying to put together the track walker sequence. Like the first, the first video for the track, the last track walker um, made for the web series. I couldn't send it out because I can't get the music together for it. I'm having a serious difficulty writing music for this. I don't know, I, I hit a, like a block in my creativity, so I can't get the music put together. I can't, I just, I spent five and six hours um, just trying to get an introductory music for this and write it on, you know, I just sat in front of the piano five to six hours. Couldn't get a damn thing done. It was just friggin' 
difficult as hell. So now I find I go, I had to scrap it and throw it away. Started working on another one, three hours, sitting in front of the piano trying to come up with a new theme. So I just decided, why don't I just go out and purchase a violin. Never played a violin before. I just go out and purchase it and just teach myself how to play it without any instructions or knowledge of this instrument at all and just come up, maybe I can come up with something that's never been done before. And that's as far as the track walker goes. Other than that, it's been an interesting year. I mean, I decided to take the business of show business seriously this year, so... After that, nine months later, I managed to double my YouTube income, which actually shocked me. I didn't know it had gone up that far. Um, beyond that, creativity levels are at a standstill. I have to go into the gallery at the end of this week. The James Bond review video will be posted on Thursday, just after the beginning of the, the film starts, because I actually I talk about my um, movies and my reviews for a very simple reason. The fact is that there's a spoiler alert, um, spoiler alert problem some people have, but the fact is that when I go to a movie, I want to know: is this worth my time? Is it worth my money? What happens? Is it going to end well? And I would like to know something about the movie personally. So that's why I, you know, there's, an, I throw out the spoiler alert garbage type of thing because I'm not interested in. Um, um, I could care less about that. Spoiler alert, my ass. <laughs> um, so with this James Bond film, I'm going to be posting it as the film starts to run through North America and then eventually I guess it'll reach Australia. And the reason why I'm not worried about any spoilers here is because uh, you can watch my video, listen to what I say about the movie, but when you go in there and sit down and watch this film, you will not remember a damn thing I said. And you know it, I know it, so I have no problems at all talking about what goes on inside the movie or what happens inside the movie. It doesn't make any difference to me whatsoever. So, uh, as far as spoiler alert goes, that's just, that's just malarkey. There is no spoiler alert. You won't remember anything a reviewer says to you about a film when you're sitting there watching it. It won't be running through your head as the film plays. You're just going to enjoy the movie. But if you know what the movie's about beforehand, you can make a proper assessment and decision that you want to invest that money in that film and you want to invest that time in that film. So that's why I just talk about the movie. I don't care if you know the ending or how it turns out because I know you're not going to remember it. Um, other topics, um, oh yeah, me and the Japanese girl. Uh, the, as you know, as, if you've been reading my Twitter account, you know, I, me and this Japanese girl, I've been, Japanese waitress, have been trying to get together and make some romance happen, and oh my god, it's just not working out, and so this week I've... I hate to say this, but I kind of gave up on us because it's just the timing's not there, the situation's not there, the circumstance isn't there. Even though the two of us know that we could make this work and make this happen, how much time do we get to spend together? Virtually none. And I knew this would happen the minute I started focusing on the career and, and just let the uh, romance, like I wanted the romance to happen first because that's what you should do when you're in a university. Hook up with someone while you're in university, because the minute you leave university and go into the job site, you may be limited to one individual to go out with, or to date, or to see. Maybe two individuals. It's going to be so damn hard for you to hook up when you're out of university and in the job site. Do it while you're in university. That's when you want to get it done. And I knew this, right? So, 
I was putting all my effort into hooking up before I did the career because I knew the career would get in the way. I'd end up spending all my time just working and spending all my hours working and then the relationship side of me would just go right to pot. Sure enough, it happened. Anyway, I still don't have anybody to go travel through Europe with. It's a backpacking adventure from the Rock of Gibraltar up to through Spain. I cancelled out on Portugal, through Spain into France, into Southern Ireland, Northern Ireland. Hopefully we can see Bob's Beauty. The creator of Bob's Beauty, I should say, Lindy and Tim and Isaac and the dogs. That would be a treat. And over to uh, Scotland, down into England and Wales, and then end up Buckingham Palace and head home. So it's still online for September, and then after that there's Japan and Australia. But uh, this has to be done first. So I was hoping to take this Japanese waitress with me, but I don't know. It just I kind of give up on that this week. I tried. What can I do? I tried. So to end off, here's uh, the final video of the night. Music from, I believe, John Lennon. And then followed, yeah, John Lennon. So my mood for tonight, let's say, I don't know, hopeful. Oh, the romance side of me, I should say. Still hopeful, still positive, extremely worn down by the whole experience, but... Uh, Put all my feelings into this music. <laughs> this is by Bert, um, Canadian artist Burton Cummings, and I think you'll get a kick out of listening to this song. I, it, the first time I heard it, it floored me. It was so friggin' funny. But uh, yeah, I set the mood, jovial mood for tonight as I end this first, maybe the last coffee shop I'll do. I'm not sure. Depends on how many video clicks it gets if I'm interested in pursuing it again. Alright, um, this is a blue screen directly behind me because I wanted to show um, maybe some other scene. I can't really set up in a coffee shop the way I should because all, the owner, the owners of the coffee shop you would, in order to be on YouTube or any other video, you would have to get everybody in the coffee shop to sign a release paper. Can you imagine doing that? People coming in, people going, oh yeah, the owner would love that, wouldn't he? So I can't show the people, but I can, I can like, show the front of the coffee shop on my blue screen, that would be okay. And uh, show some of the videos that I need to show right here. And that's about it. So I wish everybody a good night. This is Midnight in the Coffee Shop, a new series. Maybe I'll continue with it. Depends on how it goes. And we'll see you later.